Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Sutton's Days. Okay, we were up bright and early, went to the farmer's market, met up with my shroom dealer, yeah, and we have five cases of button mushrooms that need to get canned up. These are some beauties. I have to wash them, I have to cut them, I have to can them. We're going to get busy. First and foremost, we're going to get these washed up. So I fill the strainer. I have cool water brushing down, um, and we will get these cleaned up. They're not terribly dirty, so I'm kind of happy about that. Sometimes they can get pretty dirty because, you know, they are fungus. <laughs> they do they do grow in dirt. Look at this. Look at this monster shroom. Oh, that is screaming. Stuff me with something. Okay, he always brings me just the most awesome mushrooms. I am so happy with this. So we've got a lot of work to do. Look at this, another big one. Oh, okay. I might have to pull some of these out and make stuffed mushrooms for dinner. I think I think I do. But most of these are headed for the canning pot. So let's get started. Okay, so what I do do with these, I started doing it and they went, oh yeah, put the camera on. See, there's dirt on here, okay? So I will just put them in, run them under my hands, <clears throat> work at getting the dirt off. The dirt falls <clears throat> falls down in the strainer in the sink, and we're all good there. So it doesn't take but a hot minute to do. And then we'll get cutting them. Okay, so, especially with these big ones, I am not uniform... I don't take the stems off. I like the stems, so I keep those too. So I just take these and cut them up to put them into the water on the stove. I have a pot on the stove that has warm water from the tap in it. And as I cut these, I am going to drop them into the pot. When the pot is full, I will turn it on and cook these for five minutes. While that's happening, I will grab my jars and get those ready to stuff. This works out really well for me because I like big chunks. I basically, I like mushrooms, period. But I like big chunks, and when you cook them for the five minutes, it allows you to fit more into a jar. It like blanches the mushrooms, okay? And creates a really nice mushroom stock that you can can also. Now, full disclosure, time, use, everything else. I'm not keeping any mushroom stock um, this year. Uh, basically, I'm just, I, I don't have enough time to go through the straining process. But I do have a video up. I'll link it here so that you can see um, how I make my mushroom stock when I do. <clears throat> I still have some on the shelves. I also have onion stock, I have chicken stock, I have beef stock. I'm, I'm good, I'm good. I have vegetable stock, I'm good. I have plenty of stock. See, so I'm not real particular and uniform regarding size and shape, so on and so forth. But I will get these all cut up or at least this first batch into the pot and I will come back then. Okay, so this is one case of mushrooms. I've got them cut up to my liking and in the pots we're going to turn both of these burners on and cook them for five minutes. While that's happening, I'm okay, going to get Okay, so I just want to talk about this for a minute. First, this big pot, it takes a little bit more than five minutes, okay? Um, to get them cooked down a bit. So I've got like say that one not really cooked down enough yet but then these ones are you know. So you want to get to the bottom and stir up and get the stuff on top down below. Now when you go to put them in your jars, when you put them in your jars, there is a practice where some people put vitamin C or um, what is it ascorbic acid in the jar with it and apparently that is to help with color because um, the mushrooms will darken, kind of like bananas do, you know? <clears throat> it's, it's not an issue to me. Mushrooms are dark when you cook them. 
Um, it's kind of like ugly chicken. Uh, you know, it is what it is. But if you want that in with your mushrooms because you prefer them to be a lighter, whiter color than how they get when you cook them, um, then that's something that you're going to want to add into your jars. Okay? That's not me, though. That's just, just an extra step that I didn't need. So we're going to cook this down for a few more minutes. I want some of those bigger pieces uh, nice and pliable, and then we'll start scooping it up. Okay. I started filling the jars. I forgot to bring you with me. So do you see how much these, these cook down pretty good? Sorry for the seam. So now I'm going to use a slotted spoon and transfer them over into the jars. Okay. I will take the top level of this mushroom broth and use that. Whoops. Flying shrooms. Use that for um, the liquid in the jars. I do not go near the bottom because I don't want any of the sediment that's in the jars or in the pot to go into the jars. Okay, if you don't want to use the mushroom broth that's there, then heat up some water and add that. You want to add or you want to have an inch head space on these, okay? And that's going to fluctuate. I'm being very loose with filling them right now because I'm going to go back and push these down. And then when I add the liquid, I'm going to debubble. It's amazing how much these cook down. That pot was super full. I couldn't have put another shroom in there. And I want to see how many I get out of a case because I don't remember. Sorry for the steam, you guys. Okay, let's do this. Let me go get my wooden spoon. My little wooden spoon. Oh yeah, see I can get a lot more in there. This one is at flying shrooms. Ah, flying shrooms. Okay, so I've got. Let me let me change the camera angle for there you. We okay. Go. Okay. See, I'm gonna add more to these jars because when you push them down, you've got more space. I'm gonna try to do this left-handed. of the camera angle. I mean, these cook down a lot. Okay. I'm going to end up using a strain or a, yeah, a strainer, my small strainer to get more of these out. Cuz the spoon is not catching. There we go. Okay, I'm going to work on getting more of these jars filled. Um, and we'll see how many jars I fill from one case. That'll give us a good running number to figure this out. And I'm going to weigh a case um, also so that I can tell you the weight. I have to weigh an empty box. I had to empty a box to do it. So remember, an inch headspace. And so I try to get there as close as I can. I get the most mushrooms into the jar that way before I add the liquid and then we'll add the liquid and we'll get the canner going. Okay, I thought some of you might be interested in seeing what I meant by using a strainer to get things out of the pot. I will dip a small strainer, a small colander into the pot. Be careful not to burn your fingers. Let the liquid drain as much as you can and then see I've got this, it's a small one. But then I can use that, and I'm doing like one scoop for uh, filling the jars as opposed to many with a slotted spoon, okay? But look at how many, I mean, look at how many I got in there because of that. So it really saves time. You're getting the pieces. You do whatever you can to make it work for you, okay? trying to get more bang for my buck. You know me, I'm always trying to save a little bit of time and a lot of money. Okay. Now, I will get back and be back okay. in a minute. For the broth, I'm going to skim the liquid off the top from cooking down the mushrooms, and that is how I'm going to fill my jars. 
And like I said, because the jar is so full of mushrooms, you're not going to use very much of the liquid. You want to keep it at that inch head space. Okay. There we go. So that way I'm using some of it and the potential of mushrooms, oops, I don't have to drain some of that mushroom sediment or whatever. I, you know, I'm just not that terribly concerned about it. I washed these as well as you can wash a mushroom and then I put them into clean water and boiled them down and if there's any sediment on the bottom it is literally you know that inner part of the mushroom um, and I'm not believing for a minute that there's much more than that in there Now, it's not as dark as if I had let them cook longer, but <clears throat> the purpose was not to come, oh, that one's not done. Not to completely cook down the mushrooms, but to cook them down quite a bit and make them more pliable. Um, if, you went, <clears throat> if you went to the store and they sold nice big chunks of mushrooms like this in cans, I cannot even begin to imagine how much it would cost. When I open this up, okay, I am going to get that big hunk of mushroom right there. When I eat my dinner, I'm going to taste that big hunk of mushroom. I'm going to chew it um, as opposed to those slivers and slices or stem pieces that you get um, by buying canned, store canned mushrooms. <clears throat> Excuse me. The weather isn't messing with my sinuses lately. Okay, so there, that's how I'm going to make some room, okay? So I'm going to empty the pots now to make sure that I got all the mushrooms because I have just this little bit in here. Um, and from the looks of it, I'm gonna have a dozen pints from one case. We'll see if that number holds up throughout the entire process. Okay, so I've got these all filled and it did, it 12. There was just enough mushrooms in the bottom of the pot to fill that up. So I've got 12 jars of mushrooms. I'm going to wipe down the rims and make sure that I didn't get any bits or pieces on the rims. Because we are pressure canning, I am not heating up my lids, okay? Um, it's just at this stage an unnecessary step. You never miss that step when you're water bathing. Um, if you're not sure about the lids, then feel free. But with the lids the way they're made today and the fact that I'm pressure canning for 45 minutes, it's gonna be fine. Um, and they should all seal beautifully unless I mess up something like headspace or pressure but I'm gonna work really hard to not do that okay so I'm gonna get rings on these um, and I have to get my pressure canner on the stove so what I need is a bigger stove <laughs> I thought I would take the second also while I'm putting the rings on these to talk about rings um, I get a lot of questions about the rings that I use because uh, for those of you that have been with me for a long time you know I buy 90% of my jars used. The jars that I used for my home canning. For my jelly, I buy those new. But for my home canning, I buy used jars. I pay 10 to 25 cents a jar, as opposed to the prices when you get them new. They're perfectly fine. I've had no issues with them. And you end up with really cool ones, like this Canadian mason jar that's square. I love it. I love that jar. Anyway, um, so I also get my rings used. Okay, and my rings can start looking a little rough. Yes, they can. But as long as you're not having a problem getting them onto the jar, let me get these out of the way. Okay, I put them on and turn them finger tight, and they're fine. Now, if they get super rusty, I don't even think I have a super rusty one. Oh, this one's this one's lacking a little bit of character. Um, then it may cause a problem, and if I have a problem getting it on the jar, then I pitch it. Ow! The problem that I have with the jar at the moment is the jar is hot. So I get it on, no problem, even though it's not super pretty, okay? It works and it's functional. It's not about pretty equipment. It's about functional equipment that creates a good end product.
product. Um, everything does not have to be shiny and new, and if you're looking to do this even more economical than canning already is, and you buy used equipment, okay, it's still very functional, and there's nothing wrong with it. So don't let that scare you off. Um, I know some people are like, I didn't know if I could use them. Yes, you absolutely can use them. It means they work because they've been used, okay? There are some definitely that I have gotten rid of over time because they just got to be too difficult to even put on the jars. So go ahead and use your used rings. There's so no I'm going to show you my crazy setup and the way that it uh, progressed, okay? So this is the last case of the mushrooms. Um, yesterday we went thrifting with my sister when she was in town, <clears throat> and Phil found this great big pot. Um, I have the lid and the rack that goes in the bottom. It's meant for, I don't even know what they're called, but... You know those boiled dinners where it has the shrimp and the sausage and the corn and you know all of that stuff and you dump it on the the um, newspaper and the table and everyone just eats you know okay that's what the pot's for this pot is humongous I can fit three cases of mushrooms in this pot um, but if you accidentally overfill it with water then I only fit two cases in this pot so I've got the mushrooms in here cleaning, soaking and cleaning, okay? And uh, I will try to remember, I don't know if I can, but to show you what the water's like <laughs> when I pull them out. But I don't think I will ever be as confident about the cleanliness of my mushrooms as I am since this pot. It's just amazing. Okay, then we work over here. This is the slice them and dice them station. Then I load them into this pot, which I then take over and put into this pot. When they cook down from this pot, I take them back over here and I load them into jars. Once the jars are full, I load them into the canner. <laughs> so <clears throat> this is the, the process, my process at the moment, don't you just love this, um, of canning oh, five cases of mushrooms. What sane person does this? I swear. So I still have one more case that's not even soaking yet, and we will get there. But... I wanted to show you my process for canning in this very small, non-counter friendly kitchen. But we do have the first batch out of the canner. They are bubbling. They are beautiful. They are full of big, meaty, chunky pieces of mushrooms that we are going to enjoy. Based on my math, I'm thinking I'm going to get close to 60 jars. That's uh, just over three canner loads. So. I will let you know what the final count is uh, if you tune in for the next Monday Night Live. I'll be sure to keep that number handy. Remember, if you like what we do here, please hit that like, subscribe, and share. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And the information for how to can mushrooms will be in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed. Whew, next time, you want to come help? <laughs> Have a really great day.